Hi, I'm Cressel Anderson. This is Maker Size. I'm building a horizontal mill and I'm about halfway done with it, but in this episode I'm only going to be covering the assembly of the headstand and the bed. That and a little bit of the backstory that got me to this point. The machine base is comprised of the bed, the feet, and the headstand. To assemble these parts together, I first marked out where the bed contacted the feet. Next, I removed material from the underside of the bed casting using the belt sander. This created relief in the center of the bed, only contacting the table on the ends where the feet would be connected. Having this little bit of relief on the bed made it easier to focus on getting the ends flat and coplanar. After that, I taped sandpaper to my surface plate rough side up, Rubbing the bed on the sandpaper removes material from the bed until the ends are flat and coplanar. With a flat surface on the bottom of the bed casting, I could move to attaching the feet. The book calls for, first and foremost, building patterns to then cast the aluminum parts required for the build. In the lathe series, I built wooden patterns, but in the shaper series, I made use of lost foam techniques to cast the parts. In this series, I will be short-circuiting most of the casting because Bob Teeter, one of the Maker Size Cadre patrons, sent me a set of castings for the mill. There will be a few pieces that I'll need to cast because they weren't included with the set. I'll still need to do a little bit of casting to complete the project. With the bed mounting locations marked on the feet, I moved to the drill press to drill holes in the feet. You might notice that the tops of the feet castings have been machined. And I believe that Bob did some machining on these parts in his mill before sending them to me, but it certainly isn't required that the feet be machined. If the castings were rough, I would have flattened them over at the surface plate the same way I did the bed. After clamping the feet to the bed, I was able to transfer one of the 5mm hole locations to the bottom of the bed using a handheld drill. I used a 5mm drill bit for the locating holes. Returning to the drill press, I completed the hole tapped it for a 6mm fastener until I get around to making a dedicated tapping station to hold my taps vertical for thread cutting I just undo the spring on my drill press and use it to help get the threads perpendicular it's kind of slow this way but hey it works for now after tapping the hole in the bed I enlarged the corresponding hole in the foot to 6 mm. I installed the fastener and transferred the location of the second hole to the foot. Once I got these first two holes drilled and enlarged for fasteners, I can go through and finish out the remaining holes, like the back here. I've got it completed, uh, at least the three fasteners there, so I can go ahead and fasten this part on. Still have those two fasteners to go. After both feet were installed, I returned to the sandpaper to make the bottoms of the feet reasonably coplanar. After completing the mill, this extra step will make it easier to mount without distortion. One trick to removing material like this is to use a marker or layout fluid to dye the surface being sanded. As material is removed, you can keep track of which areas still need attention. I didn't get the feet dead flat, just good enough to not rock. At this point, the bed top needs to be flattened, and it's critical that the bed be dead flat. In this case, I used the same technique to flatten the top of the bed as I used for the bed bottom, but in addition, I go on to scrape it in. On surfaces like the top of the bed casting, where it's critical that the parts be dead flat, I always print and scrape in the parts. I linked a video in the cards above where I go into a lot of detail about scraping, so if you want more detail about that process, you should definitely check out that video. Basically, printing is the process of applying a fluid, in my case Prussian blue oil paint, 
to a reference surface. In this case, the reference surface is my surface plate. The part to be scraped is then placed on that reference surface and hinged around. Some of the paint will transfer, making it apparent where the high spots are. Using a scraper, I can focus on removing small amounts of material from those high spots. After using a stone to remove burrs, I return the part to the surface plate for more printing, followed by more scraping until the part is flat enough and has a high enough density of spots. After the bed casting is flat enough, I attach the bed ways. This is the cold rolled steel that gets mounted to the top of the bed casting. The carriage and tail stand will be mounted to these ways. I first marked the location of the bed onto the ways and then marked out where all the fasteners will go. I use a center punch and then drill the holes. I attach the bedways in exactly the same way as I attach the feet to the bed. I drill one hole at tapping diameter through both parts, and then I tap the hole. I enlarge the hole in the mounting parts, and then I do a second hole. After two fasteners are installed, the two parts are fixed together, ensuring alignment of the remaining fasteners. After I had the alignment where I wanted it, I transferred the location holes to the bed, drilled, tapped, and installed the remaining fasteners. I use a bottoming tap to clean up the bottoms of the tapped holes and add a countersink with a countersink bit. I set the clutch on my handheld drill and use it to speed assembly of the ways to the bed without risking stripping the threads. If you've been following Maker Size, you know that I've already built the lathe and the shaper that are part of the book series by David Gingry, written back in the 80s. The horizontal mill is book four in that series, and I'll largely be following the design that he puts out in that book. If you're interested in the design, grab a copy of the book. I've got a link down in the description. If you've been following the lathe and the shaper project, you may wonder why I didn't use the shaper to flatten the bed or the headstand. And I actually started fabrication of the mill before I mounted the shaper in a permanent location. So sandpaper works well enough, but the shaper really does make quick work of flattening chores, but that's a story for a future video. So this is the third time that I've gone over to the surface plate and printed in the bottom of this headstand. And it really makes a big difference, I think, to use the sandpaper on the surface plate to sand it down flat. With the 12 inch disc sander, it just rounds it too much. I mean, the part kind of bounces around and you get a much more domed effect than with the sandpaper. So I really like this approach. And again, this is the third time that I've been over to the surface plate and I've already got like a really good coverage of points on the bottom of this headstand. I drilled and tapped holes to use for temporarily fastening the vertical ways to the headstand. After that, I transferred the location of the bed to the headstand for locating the mounting holes. I installed the fastener 
and then used a straight edge to confirm alignment of the bedways in the front of the vertical ways, then remark the area for the second fastener. I installed the second fastener loosely, rechecked the alignment, and then clamped the headstand into place. I drilled locating holes in the headstand where required using a homemade drill guide. I needed a bit more wiggle room for alignment between the headstand and the bed, so I used a small round file to open up the two holes and a chisel to add a bit of clearance to accommodate the bedways. I used a piece of cold rolled steel as a straight edge and checked the distance from the piece of steel to the back of the bedways in two places using my calipers. I adjusted it a little bit and when the measurements were the same I could be sure that the headstand and the bedways were aligned along the left and right axis of the machine. I clamped the headstand in place using the two fasteners and a seat clamp. With the headstand aligned, I drilled and reamed holes for 8th inch locating pins, and these pins are important when parts will be disassembled to ensure repeatable assembly with consistent alignment. I installed one pin in the front and one pin in the back of the headstand. I really like having these pins to help keep things aligned. The pins are super cheap and a small reamer like the one I'm using is less than $10 including the corresponding drill bit. It really makes me confident about the alignment. I wish I knew about them when I was building the lathe and the shaper. In fact, I'll probably go back and install locating pins on some of the lathe and shaper parts. This mill is a horizontal mill, and that means that the spindle axis is in the same plane as the work table's major axes. And that's in comparison to a vertical mill, such as a bridge port, where the spindle axis is perpendicular to the work table's major axes. In this design, the spindle head, and that's the part that holds the rotating spindle, it, that moves up and down along the vertical ways there isn't any travel of the work table relative to the base of the machine. When I complete the horizontal mill, it'll feature a work table with 12 inches of travel from front to back, six and a half or eight and a half inches of travel left and right, depending on whether or not the tail stand is installed. And then the vertical spindle will travel about six inches. To mount the vertical ways to the headstand, I laid out the locations for the mounting holes in the vertical ways based on actual measurements of the headstand as it was cast. I center punched and drilled out the holes at the marked locations, but before I transferred those holes to the headstand, I needed to ensure the vertical ways were perpendicular to the bed ways. I used the temporary mounting bolts to hold the vertical ways onto the headstand. I used a square and adjusted the vertical ways until I couldn't see a gap between the square and the vertical ways. 
I tightened the temporary bolts a bit at a time until everything was tight and aligned like I wanted it. Then I drilled and installed alignment pins to ensure things didn't move around when I went to install the fasteners. After I transferred the holes, I removed the ways and tapped the holes. I enlarged the holes on the ways and countersunk them. After all the fasteners were installed in the vertical ways, I scraped the countersink burr from the top of the vertical ways. The next video in this project will be installing the spindle head on the vertical ways. I hope this project inspires you to exercise your inner maker. Thanks for watching.